Hi, this is Jean Shambly Thomas, and welcome to Passing the Torch. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. I know we got a lot of new subscribers, and uh, I'm thankful for that. I hope you go back. There's like dozens and dozens of teachings on all different uh, subjects on the channel that I've got there. I've been doing these for several years now, but it's for you. It's for goodness, and we need to uh, encourage each other and be encouraged all the time, especially with the crazy days that we're living in, right? That's you and me, and we're here. Hey, but this is so cool what Jesus brought to me this morning. Um, and this is just like, I'm going to share with you like my personal time with God this morning um, because I believe it's for you too, especially the scripture is for every person. It's an awesome scripture for this time. But um, if you will turn, it's in um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And let me pray for a second, and then we're going to dive right in. Now, hang on. I'm, you're going to get something out of this today. I know it. Lord, I thank you for your help. The Holy Spirit, you guide us into all truth. Lord, I ask that you just open this up to everyone listening, that you speak to everyone through something that is said today, and that they would walk away encouraged, Lord, and excited and hungry and thirsty for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God loves you so much. And he wants you to have an intimate relationship with him. And it takes time. But, um, you know, and, and some of it is is just walking into it. And many of you are already there. You already know this. But for those that don't, I want to do this. Um, my next teaching will be, uh, how do I know when God's talking to you? Um, we'll go ahead and do that one. But for today, I felt like this one was like an encouragement break. And it's just a real practical break. It's called Passing the Torch. So my way is not the, uh, the only way or, you know, there's hundreds of ways and then God can get creative with you about how you spend time with God, especially, you know, in what it, during your devotional time. So anyways, this morning I wake up and this is a great scripture. If all you hear is just the scripture, you've got something today. So um, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 was just rolling around in my head and my thoughts when I woke up this morning, I was waking up and I thought, hmm, I need to look that up and, you know, think about it some more because I felt like that was the Holy Spirit bringing this scripture to my attention. And this is a scripture because it's for you too. Okay. Come unto me, that's a capital M, so that's Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <sighs> rest sounds good, doesn't it? All right. It's such a stressful world out there. It really is. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, capital M, that's Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I started thinking about that. Come unto me, all ye that are uh, labor and are heavy laden. So one of the first things I did, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that could, that's, I got some of that. <laughs> so, but one of the first things I did was I just pulled out a simple dictionary and I looked up the word uh, laden, heavy laden. What does that mean? So in the dictionary, the word heavy laden means weighted down with burdens, family cares, financial cares, whatever cares, but just a heavy weight of uh, burden and where they got that definition from is back in the days of Jesus 2,000 years ago, they didn't have, you know, cars and U-Hauls and trucks and all. They had donkeys, okay, and animals like that. So that's where it came from. They would put their stuff on top of a donkey, and a donkey that was really laden had a bunch of weight on it. Uh, they called it, you know, a heavy laden donkey, okay? So this is the word that Jesus took and used that to show us how we carry our care, okay? He would, it's so cool, man. It's like he would take things from where he lived to bring them and incorporate them into his messages so that they could relate. Everybody sitting in his audience knew what a heavy laden donkey, donkey was, okay? So it was a very small thing for it to go shift from there to Jesus saying, look, you can be carrying your cares like a heavy laden donkey, if you're heavy laden with worry and care and fear and all, all of those things. So anyways, I just think it's awesome how Jesus took from around him and related to his audience. Sorry about that. So the next one I looked at um, 
Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Labor, I mean, there's a tiredness in that. And I will give you rest. Isn't that awesome? And then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Well, what is his yoke? Okay, that's what I asked. Let me finish reading it. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. So I looked up yoke. Okay, let's find out what yoke is. It's just very simple stuff, man. I just Googled it, all right, just for a Webster Dictionary thing. Um, and the donkey weighted down, okay. Then we go to yoke. It connotates servitude or submission, okay. Because um, in their day, they, had, they would take oxes in the field, and they would yoke them, put a yoke around their neck, and they would pull the plow. Okay, so again, everybody in his audience, when he said, take my yoke upon you, understood that means to serve the Lord. Take the yoke of being a servant to the Lord Jesus upon you. Okay, everybody would have known that because all the oxes all over the fields had yokes on their necks and they were pulling um, the thing that, the till, that tills up the ground and stuff like that. And they would carry other things. I mean, they yoked them to pull carts and all kinds of stuff. But his audience would have totally understood. Um, and that helps us with the picture, too. He says, my yoke is easy. Okay? He's saying, you know, my yoke is going to be way less of a burden than the world's yoke. And the yoke and the burden of those worries and cares and fears that you're carrying around. Okay, if you take my, let me take care of your yoke, give it to me, and take up my yoke, you know. I remember one time the Lord told me, he said, you know, you take care of my family, I'll take care of yours. And that was really interesting because, uh, you know, I had to put a lot of time into ministry and stuff like that. And God has always been faithful to that promise that he made to me, okay. He is so good and so faithful. So I'm reading this scripture, I'm like, okay, Lord. Um, I believe that as I woke up, that was the scripture he brought. So I'm like, what are you trying to say to me, Lord? So you seek. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. And you can do that with scripture. You can seek out what's inside of scripture. Okay? Some of you may know this and some of you don't. For your benefit, I'll do that. So I just write down in my notebook, uh, looked it up, and then I wrote down, Lord, what is your yoke for my life? He said, take my yoke upon you. I'm like, okay, well, what is the yoke for me? What is the yoke for my life? And how does that translate now? How does that relate to me now? And so I, I really, I just got quiet and listened, and, and I began to think about yokes and, and burdens and stuff. And uh, just in communing with the Lord, just in that still, small voice, I felt like he was telling me and, and the, you know, just communicating with me that he wanted me to take a little break. Take my, you know, I will give you rest, you know, and take a break from news and social media. And anyway, he took a, a list of things that actually um, probably will weigh on you if you do it all the time. So our, even our social media, you know, if you're always take a, <laughs> I encourage you take a three day fast every now and then from all computer things, internet, social media, news, you know, just, just try it. It'll give you a lot of peace. It really will. So he was encouraging me to do a three-day fast on that arena. And I said, you know, I could still do, I'm doing this. The ministry is an exception to that. Um, so I got an answer to that question. What is my yoke? What, how am I supposed to serve you? And first he wanted me to take care of the cares, give them to him, and actually be free from them pur purposely for a little while. And then uh, I felt like he said, go back and read what I spoke to you like a few weeks ago. And I look back, and my goodness gracious, this is something else. Uh, this is what I wrote down in my journal, okay? Um, I saw a vision, which pictures, God talks to me in pictures a lot. It's not unusual. It's not for everybody. But it's normal for me. Okay, that's just, you know, what it is. Doesn't make me better. Doesn't make me worse than anybody else. Okay, God speaks to us in different kinds of ways, all right? So I saw a vision, and all I saw was, like I said, I like puzzles. God knows this, and I'm his daughter. Why wouldn't he? Okay? I, I like to throw that out there, you know. Why wouldn't he? So uh, in the vision, I saw a metal grocery basket, you know, like the ones the homeless push around, the grocery baskets that you push in the grocery store. 
but it was full of red children's books. I'll give you the interpretation in a second. So there's this metal basket completely filled to the top, running over with red children's books. And then I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, there's still time for small obediences and ministry, okay? Um, like giving books to kids. Now, um, it's funny because I had totally forgot about that. If, for me, if I don't go back and read my journal, I, I'll forget, you know, those things that I get during devotional time. So, but like yesterday, I've forgotten about this, but I went online. We've got a bunch of little neighbor kids that pop over in for a popsicle. You know, they just come by and um, for a little little chit chat or whatever. And uh, so it was on my heart to get them a book called Heaven is Real, but it's a children's book. And so I ordered it last night and I didn't even think about it, but that's what this was. Um, now, I don't know why the metal grocery basket there's probably something to the fact that it was a grocery basket, okay? Oh, okay. My meat is to do your will, okay? See, I, I love it, puzzles. So a grocery basket, you put meat in there, and Jesus said, my meat, I have meat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of the Father. And then God was telling me, you know, there's time for obediences, small obediences, as the end of the age progresses on. Um, full of red children's books. Well, why were they red? Okay, that, that's very common in my personal dream language. Red represents the blood of Jesus. So this basket, which uh, was full of children's books about Jesus, that was the interpretation of the dream. So, and then he said there's still time for small obediences. And then he set it up to happen like yesterday. I've got the book on order. It's coming. Um, but just little things like that. And we all know, none of us know how much time we have, right? Okay, so we want to make the best of our time. And there's a scripture, and I'm looking to see where I wrote it down. Okay, John chapter 9, verse 4 says, I must work the works of him who sent me. This is Jesus talking. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Okay, he's not saying he can't work, he's saying no one can work. And I think those times roll around and, you know, it does say that at the end of the age, this is going to happen, that there will be times no one can work. It's going to get chaotic, okay? Not trying to, but, but anyway, I'm just saying respect your time. Time is valuable, time is precious, and ask him about those little obediences, you know, like getting a kid a book or doing something or sharing Christ with somebody in some way, um, he will show you. And that was, that's another little clue, something I'm supposed to be doing until the Lord returns or until I leave this earth. You know, he wants us to be storing up treasures in heaven. Okay, we do get rewarded for our obedience. And God loves that. He loves it. He wants to have us come to heaven, get plenty of rewards because we simply obeyed him. It's not that hard. There is a lot of resistance from the devil and the dark side. So in that arena, you have to push through. Even getting a kid's book, you'll experience some spiritual warfare. Don't do it. They're going to think it's stupid. Uh, why would you want to do that? Their mother will get mad. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you're going to get all this da, 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 to try and shut you down, to try and get you not to take a step of obedience. Now, God will tell you, obviously, something different than me, or he may have you, I mean, that's always a good idea, but God will tell you, okay, what it is. Um, so that was just my little devotional time this morning, um, but that's a great scripture, isn't it? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me for, okay, and then for I'm meek. Let me tell you what that means. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So his yoke is easy. Now, if you find yourself right now burdened down with, you know, you know, and sometimes it just takes a second to look and go, ah, oh, you're right. I'm really letting this thing with my, this family member bother me. It's weighing me down or this worry is weighing me down or, that thing is weighing me down. You just, it just takes looking at that scripture once, 
you judge yourself and liberty comes, you know? It's like, okay, Lord, I, I'm carrying stuff I shouldn't be. I cast it on you. And what do you want me to do? How would you like me to serve you today and, and spend time today? So it's just a matter of switching out the world's yoke or the enemy's yoke that he tries to put on us for his. He said, this is easy. So if you're not experiencing easy, you know, and that liberty that comes with obedience, um, there may be some sh things you need to cut out. I've had to do that over and over. I, I just don't even wait for God to prove my life. I'll do it myself. Okay. If I see that my energy is being drained in an area that, that God hasn't told me to do it, and it's being drained my energy so that I don't have energy to do what I need to do. Um, we all have to judge our own lives. And uh, you can prune your own life. You don't got to wait for God to do it. Actually, I think it's a lot better that way. Um, the Bible says if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And uh, pruning is not the same thing as, as that. But if you see an area that's just draining you, acknowledge it. Give it to the Lord. Ask Him how to cut it off or how to cut off the drain from it and move on. Put your energy into kingdom business. Put your energy where you know God wants it. Maybe there's a person you're supposed to invest in, mentor or invest in their life. Or maybe there's a friend that you know is uh, massively discouraged and they just need a little extra of your time. Well, if you're spending time on things that God didn't ask you to do and it's draining you, you're not going to have time to do the things of the Lord. So we just each, it's very easy. You just take a look at your life and say, hey, Lord, help me out with this. Show me, Holy Spirit. Show me. What do I need to lay down? And what do I need to add? What do I need to do? And man, Holy Spirit's a good organizer. He'll help you organize your life. He's so intimate with each one of us. That's why it's like, I can't, I can't give you formulas for anything. Neither should anybody else, really, other than, you know, scriptural things. But your thing with God is very unique. You're an individual. It'll be very creative. Why? Because our Father is a creator. Okay? I mean, he may come up with ways. Fun. I'll, I'll share this, okay? Because I am I am big part of me as an evangelist, all right? And I, I married a, a man that's the same way. And um, we just had this idea pop in our head one time to take these uh, little salvation tracks, get some helium balloons, and we attached them and just sent them off over Los Angeles County. <laughs> and they were little. They weren't going to be a plane, you know, anything illegal or nothing. They were just a little party things, but a little salvation. But I can't wait to get to heaven and find out. I know it'll come down when it runs out of helium and land in somebody's yard. And I can just picture somebody walking out, whoa, picking it up and just knowing God did this. God, somehow this came to my door right when I needed it, you know. And of course God did it. Who put the idea in us, the creative idea to do that? And it was fun. We had a blast. There's so many fun ways that you can, you know, minister and witness. I talked to a, an old lady. and She was in a, a class that I did. And um, she's like, and I, I gave out these really beautiful uh, tracks about true love and just had the scriptures about Jesus. Um you can actually find it on, boy, it's a new company that bought them out, but printmytrack.com, and you can type in true love, and it'll come up, and, and you know, you can purchase, I don't get anything from that, except credits to get me more, from that. so anyways, but, um, so my point is, it was this lady, and here she's old, she's in her 80s, and she's not in good health, and she went home after the message in the tracks, and she sat down in her den, and she said, Lord, I don't go anywhere much. I don't see a lot of people. How can you use me? I don't see a lot of people. And so, bing, this idea popped in her head. <laughs> Where did that come from? That's the Holy Spirit. She said, uh, I do go to the library. So this little sneaky soldier of God goes to the library in her 80s, probably with her walking cane, <laughs> and she prayed, Lord, show me what book to put this in. And she would walk up and down the aisles and the Lord would show her, put it in this one. And she would pray over that book. That whoever got that book and took it home would open it and know that Jesus is knocking on the door of their heart. Because indeed, that is what he does. God uses people. God uses human beings. God uses you and I uh, on things like that. Um, 
And other people are good at, you know, talking to people about it. But if you're not, I mean, wherever you're at, ask God for creative ways to share Christ. And ask Him for creative ways uh, for you to have your devotional time with Him. You know, sometimes I get, uh, not bored, but I'll just be honest. You know, sometimes I do, it, it kind of lacks a luster if you just do the same thing every day. So sometimes I'll pick up my guitar and instead of praying my prayers, I'll sing them, you know. I'll, that's just something that helps stir it up for me. You don't even have to be a good singer or play guitar. You could just sing your prayers just to mix it up a little bit. God is a creator, you know, you can write out your prayers if that helps you. Don't be afraid to, to juggle things up just to bring life back into them. And God will breathe on your efforts. He will breathe on you because he loves you. So anyways, um, I think I'm going to stop now uh, and cut this one short. And I may just go ahead today and do part one of how do I know when God is talking to me. So you can look for that soon. I've already got the notes done and everything out. But I'll go through eight different ways in the Bible that show us how God communicated, communicated to the humans in the Bible. Okay, we need to know that. It's good. So, you know what? It doesn't really matter. I mean, all hell can break loose outside of our doors in the country and other countries in the globe. But we can always carry peace in here. We can always carry peace. So, Father, I ask for great peace upon those who are listening. And I ask for creative ideas for those who are listening. And, Lord, I ask that you just revitalize, re-energize, re-fire, recharge uh, the devotional time that each one of us has, Lord. Breathe upon us r new life, fresh water. Breathe upon us and refresh us, Lord. And we ask that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, and we will see you back with Passing the Torch next time. Bye-bye.